What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over using the inventory widget to actually equip armor. Now we don't have any sort of armor at the moment in the game, so this is just a preliminary using the widget to actually set things up on our character. So if I go into my inventory, I've set up this, basically this little body buttons, and I can change where my armor goes based on what button I click on. Now, obviously, this isn't very useful on its own. We will need armor, and that'll come in part two. We'll create armor pieces, equip them, and I'll show you how to actually uh, change the positioning of armor that already exists. So, for example, if you want to change between left and right leg or left and right shoulder, or if, if you're using the system for weapons, because we have our weapons set up a little bit differently, but they can be uh, implemented the same way, you can have left and right weapons as well. Kind of like Dark Souls, how you can have left-handed and right-handed weapons. So this is basically, this will work for all of this, for all those different um, features and all those different possibilities, depending on what you need to do. But it's quite simple. Basically, today's episode is all about binding those controls, so where we're going to put them, to you know a control in the widget or an assignment in the widget. So I'm doing it with the mouse right now. This game will, of course, include controller support, so we'll need to be able to select this from a menu. And our menus right now are also a little lacking, simply because I haven't had a need to make them any better. But when we get into controllers, we're not going to be able to do this with the mouse either. So we're going to be able to go through all of the uh, items on our inventory screen with the controller, and you'll be able to swap things out and select things using that method. But for today, we're still mouse only, just so you guys are aware. Now, we can go ahead and get right into it. There's not going to be any code in this episode, as this is just part one for the widget and setting that up. In the next episode, we'll go over creating armor as a whole. So, what the armor stats can give to our character and things like that. If you've not watched any part of this series, we're on like episode 16. So, we're pretty far along. We're still, there's still plenty, plenty more episodes to go, but we're far enough along that you may want to catch up. If you do, I'll leave the playlist right here in the top right corner. Okay. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and get started. First things first, we're going to go into our inventory window widget. So this is the inventory uh, screen that I had made initially, where it's got this vertical box that holds our buttons. Now, uh, I've, I made this a little bit shorter. That way it doesn't take up the whole screen and I can have this little diagram on the right. The diagram obviously is not important however you set it up. You can put these all in a box in their own vertical box and set it up. Again, like Dark Souls, if you wanna set it up that way where you just have head, chest, arms, legs in one box in one row, go for it. I made this little guy, but you don't have to do that. It, doesn't really matter and honestly it might not even stay like that but I thought it was a good way to represent it for now and all I've done are added buttons and images for each of these sections so I made them the exact same size and at the exact same location so that when I anchor them and scale them as we will later uh, these will always be on top of each other basically the thought is I don't have any armor right now but I would be able to either drag with the mouse or select with you know A on an Xbox controller or something like that, and determine what armor piece could go to what section. So if I have gauntlets, maybe they can go to my left and right arms here. So I have one for the head, one for the left arm, one for the right arm, one for the chest, one for the left leg, and one for the right leg. Now the button is what's going to actually determine uh, what we're what we're doing there. So you know where we're choosing to attach this box that we added for representation. You know, next episode or whenever we get armor in, then when we click on the helmet, then it's probably going to go to the head slot. We won't have to actually press the button. So that's one way to do it. The image is gonna be used to display what is in that slot. So it shouldn't be probably just a straight white image. It should probably be some sort of, you know, default icon like a question mark or an X or something to say there's nothing here. And then when we actually select an item, we are going to be able to fill this data out, which is why I have the image. Now, um, 
you can put the button and the image together, as I've said. You can put the uh, image at a lower Z order or a higher Z order, depending on what you want. So the image in my case is supposed to go over the button, but we need to be able to click through the image. So the image, dis the button does not display at all. The image is what displays, but we can click through the image. So um, as the Z order says here, higher values are rendered last and so they will appear on top. So if you want, you can put the images to be one to ensure that they are rendered on top of the button. However, I have never had an issue. I think by default in Unreal, images are rendered on top of buttons. If I'm wrong, I apologize. But again, I have never had an issue and I've never had to manually change this. But I like to tell people this because it is technically the correct way to do it. Although I just changed the wrong one there. Put all the images higher than the button. Oops. There we go. And now all my images are at a Z order of one while my buttons are at a Z order of zero. So we're good to go there. Now on each of your buttons, you can go down, you can click on them, go to the details panel, scroll down and go to on pressed. We want on pressed because this will work for both the mouse if we're clicking or an input device like enter or a controller like A to confirm that, you know, that button has been selected. Now. Again, if we're not using the mouse, to be honest, you probably won't be using this sort of system. You would really have a controller on your items and then press A to select the one you want and then this will automatically update. But I like including both mouse and keyboard support as well as controller support in all these series, which is why I've done it this way. So I have on press for each of these buttons and they're all basically gonna do the same thing. But before we get into that, Let's make sure that we make a few changes to our uh, event construct here for our inventory window, just to make sure we have what we need. In our base character BP, we were attaching a collision box to the right hand. And you can see that's this right hand collision I have here. And that's working and that's good. But I wanted a way to uh, showcase the armor and where it was going to go without actually placing armor there, since we haven't gone over armor or anything like that yet. So we have our temp armor collider, something I've added, which is a box collision. So on your character, you can add component and go to box collision. Call it whatever you want. Temp armor collider is good. You could have one for each of your, your areas here. So head, gauntlets, chest, and legs. It's up to you if you want to do it that way, make it more complex or simpler. Doesn't really matter. Um, and now in the box collider, you can actually change the box extents and the line thickness to change the shape of this object. I just made the line really thick. I can make it as thin or as thick as I want. Um, normally it's kind of like this and I didn't want to just have that. I thought that might be confusing. So I made it intentionally pretty thick. That way you guys were very clear um, on what was the armor collider here because I know I have a lot of things visible and a lot of things showing. And to make this even more obvious, I can actually hide the collision in game. And then for the box collision, you wanna make sure that the rendering is not, it, it should be visible, but it should not be hidden in game if you wanna actually visualize it like I have now, or I can see it in here. You can see I turned off the right hand collision uh, Why I made it hidden in game. So I actually turn that on. Okay. And now if we go back to our inventory, the only, I made a minor change and this is because I need to be able to grab the slots of the character from the inventory window widget here. Now we could also, and probably a better way to do it is to just call an event on the character reference and have the event set the slots. But for now, again, since we don't have any actual armor, I don't have any sort of struct to pass along. And since that's something we're gonna cover in the next episode, this is how I'm going to do it for now. Basically, I'm making sure that I'm getting my owner playing pawn, owning player pawn of this widget. And then I am casting it to my base character BP, which is my character blueprint here. That way I can get things like the uh, temp armor collider from it. And then I'm setting the character reference to that. I did not have a reference before, so this is new. 
to actually make this reference, you can just drag off of your cast and hit promote to variable. The rest of the things in begin play here are all related to the stats on the weapons and things like that. So those are things we already covered in a previous episode and nothing you have to change. The only other thing you have to add in here is for all of the buttons, I'm going to apply the attach logic and see I do it for all of them. So it's pretty simple, but I'll walk you through what I've done. Uh, I take the character reference, and then I, gra I drag off of it, and I grab our new box collider that we added. For me, that is the Temp Armor Collider. It says Get right here. And then I also grab the Mesh from the character reference. Once I have those two things, I can then do Attach to Component. Um, the easiest way to do this is to drag off of the armor collider and pick the, the second one, actually. To this day, I always get this wrong. The second one is the scene component. If you don't want to guess, you can just hover over them. You can see the bottom one is the, the scene component. That's the one we want. Okay. And you can see these nodes are the same. Uh, so your temp armor collider, I'm going to delete this one to not make it confusing. Your temp ar armor collider should already be in your target. If it's not, make sure that this is going into your target. Now the parent is what you want to attach it to. We want to attach the temp armor collider to the mesh. That way it moves as the character moves. That's the whole point of attaching it here. So put the mesh as the parent. Everything can stay snap to target and weld simulated bodies. When we get actual armor pieces in the next episode, I can show you the differences for how you can actually use them to give a little bit of a different effect. Although we'll, we will probably always use snap to target in a case like this. Then lastly, you have the socket name, which is where you want to attach this at. So for me, this is kind of just a rule of thumb. I kind of just have uh, sockets here, or actually I have uh, just bones that I want to use. So you can do this a few different ways, but I like to go to my base character BP, click on the mesh, and then click on the skeletal mesh. It'll open up the skeleton here. And then you can pick bones and or sockets that you want to use. So, you know, for the weapons, I made a weapon socket and that's fine. What I actually ended up doing for the armor is just attaching it directly to the bones. Really, it doesn't make a big difference. You can do either or. This is not a case where either really has an advantage over the other that I'm aware of. So I pick the head for my head, and then I pick left arm for my left arm, right arm for my right arm, left leg and right leg, and for my chest, I believe I picked spine two. Basically, you just go to where this little uh, orange indicator is and determine if that looks like a good spot for you, for where you want that object to be attached to, and then you pick the, the skeleton. You pick that bone and put that as the name. So to show you this in action, I picked head for my head armor, left arm, and yes, yeah, spine two for my chest armor. So you can pick a bone or a socket, it doesn't really matter, but now it will be attached to that part of our character, and that's good. Kind of unrelated, but just because I mentioned it earlier, I did shrink these buttons down. So if you're following the series uh, exactly, you'll notice this was pretty large before. This was basically the whole way across here. I just made it, you know, a little less than half. That way I can have this alongside my armor screen. It's not required that you do that, but if you want to do that, you don't have to change the vertical box. Although I also shrank that, but it doesn't matter if you change that or not. Um, it's only going to display whatever objects uh, are in there, whatever children the vertical box has, such as this button. So if this is smaller, then the objects in the vertical box are going to appear smaller because they are quite literally smaller. And at that point, uh, all we need to do is make sure that we can actually press the buttons on our inventory widget. So we made the, the logic when we press the buttons, but we have to make sure we can press the buttons. Now the images are set to be on top of the buttons, remember that. But while we want the image to display, you know, whatever armor piece we have, we still need to be able to click the button behind the image or below the image, depending on how you look at it. To do that, we can go to each image. Um, I'm on the button right now. We can go to each image and we can scroll down to behavior, visibility, 
and make it not hit testable and I make it self and all children. So basically what this does is it's still visible, but this image and any children of this image, which to be honest, um, doesn't really matter. We won't have children of this image. So this is kind of null and void here. But anyway, um, this image and any children of this image will be able to be clicked through. They're basically, they don't have any sort of collision with them. So, you know, you can't use the mouse to click on them. Basically, you'll click whatever is behind them. They don't take up space on the layout is basically a good way to say it. They don't have any functionality bound to them. So we can click right through them. So if I were to make this visible, for example, so I have the image on top of my button and now I open my inventory. When I press the head, then it does not move like it does for all these other ones. Okay, but making it not hit testable and you can do self only again, it doesn't really matter. In this case, we won't have children of this image. Then there you go. You can see that it goes right back up to the top because I clipped through the image and clicked on the button behind it. All right. That's how you can make a very basic armor equipping system or basically any sort of attaching system that will work for, you know, two two parts. So if you want to do left hand, right hand, left leg, right leg, whatever. And in the next episode, we will make armor pickups or, you know, just add them to our inventory. And when we select them in the inventory, they can go to the appropriate slot. We will basically define them as either a helmet, you know, gauntlet, chest piece or leg piece. And then we will be able to adjust it accordingly from there. But that's all I got for today. So if this video helps you, please subscribe. It does more for the channel and more for me than anything else you can do. I just really appreciate it. And it helps me continue these series. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support me and continuing to give me great video ideas so that I can help you guys make the games that you want. If you have any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. We're able to help you for free and get your problem sorted so you can continue making your game. And lastly, guys, if you want to come see some programming live streams where I make a side-scroller Castlevania-inspired game, or just play some other games like Bloodborne and Dark Souls, you can come check me out here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash 27 or check out the live streams that happen right here on this channel every Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's all I got for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.